Our next H word almost always gives people an unsettled feeling. Can't do this anymore. It's over. What do you What do you mean it's over? You can't do this anymore. It can't be over. I'm done. How can you be done? We We just started. <laughs> Does recurring hyperventilating cause long-term side effects? Oh my <laughs> goodness. Poor guy. I like the way that question was presented. <laughs> I know, and you know, interestingly. Women tend to hyperventilate a lot more than men. Emotional stress, um, other things like physical stress, anxiety, panic attacks, fever, some medicines, asthma and emphysema can also bring this on, some rare cases of head injury. So um, there's a lot of things that can you know, do this. If it's, if it's persistent, you definitely need to speak with your, your doctor about it. Well, and the question was, does hyperventilating over the long term cause health problems? The question is, why is it happening? And mm -hmm. I see a lot of this, believe it or not, in the emergency department. Hyperventilating often does accompany panic attacks, et cetera. And when you hyperventilate, it has a true physiologic response in the body, which acutely is not necessarily good. So as you begin to hyperventilate, hyperventilate. You're breathing too fast. As you're breathing too fast, your heart rate increases. As your heart rate increases, a lot of things are changing in your body because your heart's beating faster, you're breathing faster. What you're doing is you're breathing out too much CO2, too much carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide level drops and your pH level goes up. You can get some vasoconstriction, constriction of your blood vessels. What happens then? Tingling in your hands. You may start to feel tingling in your legs, in your feet. And then of course, as we saw in that tape piece, you can get very dizzy because as you're blowing off all that carbon dioxide, it does wreak havoc with what your pH should be in your bloodstream. If you continue to hyperventilate, you could even pass out. That's why you've seen it on airplanes. As people hyperventilate, they bring you a, a, a bag. <laughs> and the idea is as you're breathing out carbon dioxide, you're actually breathing some back in. Mm -hmm. and this is something that theoretically could work if you're having nothing but a hyperventilation episode. In the ER now, if somebody, if you make the diagnosis, you rule out heart problems, respiratory problems, do you give them a brown paper bag? You know what? I actually do. I try to do a little bit more of what Dr. Lisa is going to describe. Yeah, because I, I'm not a big fan of handing bag. bags to people and just say, just <laughs> keep breathing in the bag. You're good. I'll be back, I'll be back in an hour. Really? Okay. You yeah. know, you don't want someone to... But There's other things you can practice, you can like blow, trying to blow, like you're blowing out a candle, just put your two lips together and, and blow. Um, closing one nostril, and that may help as well. Breathe slowly, one breath every five seconds, and try doing the um, belly breathing, so breathing from your abdomen. So a lot of just in controlling and out. Controlled, controlled breathing, breathing exactly. But we can't express enough. If it's, you know, you need exercises. to find the problem, you need to check it with your doctor if it persists.